Okay, good evening, folks. I'm going to call the uh, select board meeting for Monday, July 1st, 2024 to order. It is, we started a minute late, it's 531. Any changes or additions? Yes, so we added uh, the select board meeting minutes of June 17th, 2024, the public hearing minutes. They okay. not uh, original agenda. And you want to do that before the regular meeting or after the regular meeting minutes? Uh, up to you. Okay, let's do it afterwards. I'll call that number two. So that's a, to approve the minutes from 61724, which was the public hearing. Correct. In regards to zoning, the zoning bylaws. Yes, please. <clears throat> okay. So is that it? Is yes. that it for changes and additions? Okay, so moving on, approve the minutes. So I have the minutes from 61724. That would be the regular select board meeting. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of June 17, 2024, the regular select board meeting. A motion by Chris. Recording in progress. I have a second by Richard. Any discussion of those minutes? Hang on one second. My name was misspelled. You put an O in it, and I have the. I can get you the page. That page. It was a minor. Okay. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Obviously, a typo. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I just had one question. I think I know the answer to this, but. Under uh, schedule, I'm looking at the minutes under schedule. What was bold faced was what was originally there, and then what is not bold faced includes the scratch. Okay, okay, great. Um, any other discussion in the minutes? All those in favor of the minutes as presented? Aye. 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 That would be unanimous, Judy. And now we have the minutes from June 17th, 24. This would be the public hearing zoning bylaw minutes that you've been given tonight. Yeah, I would make the motion to accept the select board uh, meeting minutes for the public hearing on zoning for June 17th, 2024. I have a motion by Chris. Second. And a second by Richard. Any discussion of these minutes? I know you've just received them. I would say that most of this are the zoning proposed changes that we've seen multiple times. Here. Just retyped again. Okay, with me going forward on a vote? Yes. Okay, so all those in favor of the minutes as presented? Aye. 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 That would be unanimous. So new, just give me one second. Uh, so new business, Board of Liquor and Tobacco Control. I have a motion to recess the select board meeting. I would move to recess the select board meeting and open the uh, Tobacco and Liquor Control Board. Okay, a motion by Chris to recess. Do I have a second? Second. Second by George. Any discussion? All those in favor of recessing the select board meeting to Aye. enter Board of Liquor and to Tobacco Control? Aye. That would be unanimous. So we just have the one license, Big Intelligence Group, 10 Railroad Street. Jason, are you good with this? Okay, great. So um, I'll move to approve the tobacco license renewals as presented. Okay. Is that a second? Second. Second by Richard. So I have a motion by Chris, a second by Richard. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the license for Big Intelligence Group LLC, 10 Railroad Street. Say aye. 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 That would be unanimous. A uh, motion to adjourn Board of Liquor and Tobacco Control. I will move to adjourn the Board of Tobacco and Liquor Control. Motion by Chris. Second. Second by Richard. 
Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. 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 That'd be unanimous, Judy. And finally, a motion to reconvene the select board meeting. So moved. I have a motion by Chris and a second by George. Discussion? All those in favor of reconvening the select board meeting? Aye. 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 Okay, that would be unanimous. Okay, so for a uh, second on new business is to adopt the local emergency management plan. And um, I know I, for one, read through that and I had a few recommended changes. And I, uh, I'm going to ask Brent just to go through there and just highlight the changes in the document. It's all pretty minor. Yes, so uh, Judy went through and made recommended changes, but we'll start on page one. It's labeled page one at the bottom. You'll notice that the date is updated to July 1st to, to note the, the edits made as of today, and that's on every page thereafter. Okay. If you move to page 1 2, which is the emergency management plans, phone members, uh, there's a change under animal control officer. Uh, Bruce Emerson was entered in with his cell phone number. Up above that, actually, for town manager, my email address was corrected. Okay. And then a third change is school contact number two, ML principal is Jessica Wills. Um, and then further down below under primary shelter, alternate contact, also updated to Jessica Wills. My phone number's not right on there. Either. My phone number's not right on there. I don't. Do you have that correction, Brent? I have to give it to you. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> uh, on one dash three, Mountain River School was removed. And uh, for private school, the name was changed to All Saints. The next edit on 2 2. Don, your name was removed and was replaced by my name. In title. Okay. 2 4. The title and emergency 911 address was changed to the EMS building, 539 Washington Avenue. As it was stated earlier in the packet, worth noting. Yeah, so catch that. that was just being consistent. We had sort of conflicting information there. Brent, can you just give me that address when you do this? Uh, it's the EMS building, which is. 539 Washington Avenue. Thank you. Next change, uh, multiple changes. So this was uh, transferred over from a, a PDF file. And so when it was transferred over under the five National Incident Management System NIMS type resources, multiple areas had NIA rather than N slash A for not applicable. Mm -hmm. So those are updated throughout. So they should all be N slash A's? Yes, except for uh, where it's otherwise noted by a number one or two. Yeah. On page 4-2, the contact reports on town website under 4.2 and 4-2 changed from .gov to .org. And that's all the changes. Great, thank you, Brent. This is a, a nice document. Um, it does spell out rather clearly for the public what our local emergency management plan is. If such an event should happen. It's, it's quite detailed, so thank you. 
And thanks goes to, I assume, Jason and Danny and Corey as well. Thanks. Uh, do I have a motion? I would, I would make a motion to um, adopt a local emergency management plan as presented and amended and corrected and authorize um, town manager Grant Raymond to sign it. Do I have a second? Second. So I have a motion by Chris, second by George. Any discussion? All those in favor of adopting the local emergency management plan as amended, as presented and amended? Aye. 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 That would be unanimous. Number three, approve the coin drop. Now, I'm assuming Tracy's not here. <laughs> Why don't you come up to the microphone? We might have a question for you. But th this is the fourth year that we've done this. Yes, I, I'm Erica Scott, president of Thank the you, Cancer Eric. Network. Thank you for hearing <laughs> us and hopefully letting us do this. Fourth annual, it would be August 3rd nine to one and i believe tracy in her text said that she had already talked to jason and denny and that there was no no problems on their end so and this is tracy patno yes sorry been here in the past yes yeah. jason i assume we're good with this things have gone well in the past hours nine to one in front of the carriage house the old demars building great any questions for erica just, just out of curiosity, how much money does this is normally raise? It's ranged a little bit. It, I want to say the first couple of years we did it, it was during COVID. So, mm. I mean, we were higher towards the five five thousand mark. Sure. I want to say last year it was somewhere in the three thousand. I mean, for That's four hours, exciting. and we had a great time. Honestly, I mean, mm. you see a lot of people, and for us, it's not just that day. It re drums up from the walk and we end up getting more donations that's mm -hmm. kind of stroll in afterwards. So it's mm -hmm. kind of a kill two birds with one stone. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'll make a motion to approve the coin drop on August 3rd from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at 275 Brooklyn Street. Second. I got a motion by Richard, second by Chris. I just have one more question. Are you guys waiting or showing? I run the Morisco Farmers Market. Oh. And so I like to advise people. Yeah, just inform them this is happening. Uh, but are you rain or shine? Yes. Okay. We're gonna plan for rain, so it won't, you know. But yeah, no rain or shine. So yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if they come looking for you, you know. Yeah, we'll be there. Thank you. Okay, great. Any other questions? All those in favor of the motion as presented. Aye. 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 Thank you. That would be unanimous. Well, uh, Thank you, Erica. Thank you very much. Thanks for doing all that work. <clears throat> Appointments. Um, we have two appointments, the Memorial Valley Rail Trail. Uh, I'm just wondering, do you, do we want these motions separate? Sure. So we're looking for a motion to appoint our town manager, Brent Raymond, to would, serve would, on that board, that yep. committee. I would make the motion to appoint Brent Raymond to Memorial County LVRT Regional Committee. Do I have a second? Second. So I have a motion by Chris, a second by George. Do we have any discussion? So all those in favor of the motion. Hold to... on, hold on just a second. Um, on that form, does it need just the chair signature or does it go home? Uh, both forms are, are there and uh, so one of them has all five, the other has just the chair. So now, now one needs an authorization to yes. have the chair. Yep, so I would um, continue the motion to say that uh, we would authorize uh, Chair Don McDell to sign on behalf of the board. I'll we'll second that. Okay, so we have a motion to appoint our town manager, Brent Raymond, to serve on the Omaha County LVRT Regional Committee and to authorize myself to sign. And we have a second. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. George seconded the first. Oh, okay. Time. All right. Okay. <laughs> Thank Just you. Just <laughs> <laughs> a second somewhere. <laughs> All those in favor of the motion as presented. All right. Okay. okay. And then secondarily, we have a uh, looking for a motion to appoint Brent Raymond again to serve on the Lamar County Planning Commission Brownfields Committee. I would so move. So I have a motion. I have a second. 
Second. A motion by Chris, second by Richard. Jump in here. Huh. It's not worth it. Um, I would like to know what uh, the Brownfields Committee is, though. I've never heard of it. Um, most, you know, I can't speak to LCPC specifically, but most of the regional planning commissions, actually all the regional planning commissions in the state, uh, typically have a Brownfields Committee. And um, my motivation for joining it is because I want to better understand how I might be able to bring in federal dollars for various properties that may be brownfield properties and through the process you can get federal funds to clean up those properties and then uh, residents, developers can purchase those properties and put them to, to public use. Can you expand a little more on brownfields? What they uh, are? Well, here's an example of brownfield a brownfield's in a situation where there's been some degree of, let's say, toxic waste right, underground. A good example of this are some of the old filling stations, some of the old Locked. service stations okay. yeah. that might have had a tank leak underground. Yeah. And for that reason, they're designated as a brownfield. And once they're designated as a brownfield, they are regulated as to what can happen above them. They can be. You know, they can be mitigated. They can, you know, the soils can be removed and cleaned. I just wanted to make sure that we were all on the same page. Are any of the uh, areas from the floods, if they had enough, you know, gasoline and oil, would those be considered brownfields? Not that I'm aware of. Typically, like Don said, it's gas stations. It can be it's old industrial stuff properties. Um, stuff's been leaked in years and years. Green asbestos issues. Okay, so it's not an emergency. It's, it's more not like soil. a Superfund site. That's, see, that's what a I'm Superfund thinking. site would be elevated to a much higher level. That's, that's what I'm familiar like, with. Like, for those of you who are familiar with the Barge Canal in Burlington. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. That's why I have not heard the term brownfields. Yeah. I just hear super fun. <laughs> it's probably a good thing you haven't heard it. So, anyway, yeah. so it's a, a more longer term. I'm just trying to make a distinction because we had so many properties affected by the yeah. potential toxic stuff blowing through the properties, but th this does not cover any of those. Any uh, that have been impacted by flooding? Yeah. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Yeah. It's a more of a, a, lar a longer term distinction to get a brownfield. So. Well, I mean, it, it could be, Property but it is the level of contamination that would, you know, there's there's a whole bunch of <laughs> gates to get through to be a brownfield. Do we have any known brownfields in Morrisville? I haven't yet joined the, so the commission. Just curious. Um, I'm required to get approval from the select board before I can join. And I haven't done any initial research. I would be shocked if Morristown didn't have several, so, yeah. because most communities do have a uh, yeah. few. I'm just—it's interesting. We—it hasn't come across us, so yeah. I think this is right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any more discussion? So I think we had a motion by Chris, and we had a second by. Alusa. No, you got me wondering. <laughs> What's that? By Richard. By Richard. By Richard. Okay, so I got a motion by Chris and I got a second by Richard to appoint Brent Raymond to our Lamont County Planning Commission Brownfields Committee. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, that would be unanimous. Hazard mitigation, number five, hazard mitigation funding program. Brent, I think you were going to speak to this. Yeah, so I spoke with uh, LCPC last week. Um, Don, you and I attended an LCPC meeting a couple weeks ago. Um, for those people that aren't aware, there's approximately $90 million in hazard mitigation funds available to Vermont communities. Um, the state budget signed by Governor Scott uh, includes state funds to cover what would be the match. So these funds uh, have no match for, for communities. Um, the county is working together, communities are working together on various projects uh, for, for each municipality to select 
August 16th is a deadline for an initial cursory pre-application. Doesn't need to get into much detail, but we do need to submit by August 16th. So some examples from other communities, um, Johnson Village uh, has, will be submitting for flood benches and buyout properties. So municipalities can buy out properties that are on floodplains. Um, there have been some conversations, uh, Morristown for potential purchase. Um, I also spoke with Seth uh, from Morristown about uh, the Oxba. I spoke with some staff here, including Todd, about perhaps raising certain levels of the Oxbow, uh, potentially reducing others. Spoke with FEMA a couple weeks ago about that. And um, we would need various hydrology studies. So I've been speaking with LCPC through uh, an organization called SLR International, formerly known as Malone and McBroom, out of Waterbury. There's already a, a model for the Memorial County Planning Commission available. So the LCPC could do hydrology modeling to test potential raising of certain parts of the park and uh, reduction in others to see water flow, how that would impact uh, not only our community, but further downstream. Typically, a study like this would cost us uh, $20,000 or more, but because of the data <coughs> that CPC already has, um, the cost would be approximately $8,500 as a quote that I've received. So that's already a substantial savings, and this would be something that we could submit as part of our application. Um, and I've spoken with LCPC about that as well. We could have a phase submittal. So we would need to show to FEMA that whatever fill removal and or addition that we proposed, you know, that we had engineering and, and, and various studies. So we could do a phased application for OXPO. Uh, another uh, potential project that we could submit that we've discussed also is survey of our roads and bridges and, and culverts um, to have analysis done of which ones could be impacted by flooding and prioritize those for us. Um, and then we could look at potential purchase of property. So we have until mid-August to make decisions about, about these and then uh, submit our initial application. So I'm in ongoing conversations uh, with LCPC, and talking to staff for, about ideas, and also I've spoken, had some cursory conversations with FEMA. Um, and LCPC has been very good about <clears throat> trying to gather us all together and all of us supporting one another's projects so that um, when it, it goes to the federal government, not only the not only FEMA knows that we're all in agreement, but our federal delegation knows as well and can comfortably support us. And now is more small power and light in on these discussions? Yeah, so Scott Johnstone has had communications with us and Scott uh, has stated that Morrisville Power and Light is interested in relocating the public wells and the Tenney Bridge floodplain. Uh, they want some restoration done. So they will be submitting that. And, and are we, are, is the thought that we also would be joining in on that? So we'll, or are we gonna have separate? They can submit separately, but I, I think mm -hmm. um, it would be good if we all work together. Try to, oh, oh, so we can't, there's not the potential for us to go after additional or separate money. Yeah, we can put I, in I separate. I don't want us to compete with each other either. So, you know, that's, if we can get more money, great. But if we're going to end up competing, that's my concern. It's been pretty clear from the meetings that the best approach, and this is the, you know, the individuals from the state that um, have advised us at these meetings, mm -hmm. um, the engineers, LCPC, the best approach is, is a regional approach. So the more that we can work with others, the better. I mean, working with Scott and the trustees has been very easy. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, their their needs are kind of obvious. obvious yeah. Ours might be, 
I mean, what, what Brent just talked about, that's a pretty obvious need to well and the, the work over at Tinney Bridge. It, it looks like when the state put the new bridge in, they changed the direction of the flow of the river. And uh, now the river seems to be aimed right at the well. So one of their big items is to put some money at, uh, you know, altering the course of that river a little bit to take it away from their infrastructure. And, but the same was true with other towns as well, you know, working with, Hart, working with uh, Wolcott, working with Johnson, working with Cambridge, and working with um, Hardwick. So it's not just uh, between many towns, but it's between two counties as well. And the more of that that we can do, the more likely we are to get money. So yeah, we are working yeah, the idea is that we would work a lot with other in uh, another, other groups, other entities, other municipal. No, municipal. I think that's great. I just want to hope that we can go after as much money as possible. And to answer goal. your other question, the applications, each, each item deserves its own pre-application, yeah. but the pre-applications don't seem to be very heavy. They seem to be a, right. a pretty easy lift. Now, okay. the actual application later on will be much yeah. more technical. Yeah, much okay. more technical. Thank you. Okay, we don't, there's no action. We're not looking for any action tonight. So just an update. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. okay. Any, any discussion from the board? That's great. Thank you. I'll remind the public that there's a total of $91 million out there that is available in the state. And that's what we're, we're trying to get a chunk of that. And uh, Lamoille County, Hopefully, can get get some money, and Morristown can get some money. Okay, number six, Jersey Heights, the three acre rule. We had a uh, a meeting last Thursday, I believe it was. Yes. And it was the second meeting that we had regarding the stormwater permit for Jersey Heights, and uh, it was well attended. We had a lot of people there. I, see a lot of familiar faces in the audience tonight. Uh, there was a lot of great comment, in my opinion. Um, there was some, some very um, well stated concerns on the part of residents from Jersey Heights. And we listened to that. Brent did a presentation first to the group and Gave them some background on where we where, where we stood. Also gave them a proposal, and we've gone through several different options. And I know people in the audience, some of you have heard this a couple of times, but I'll just state it again for everybody. But a couple of the options were basically what we're looking at is we we need we need to do some work to renew a, a stormwater permit, and the estimates are somewhere in the range of uh, four hundred thousand dollars or more. And uh, we have a grant that has been um, offered to us from the state, from Agency of Natural Resources, for some 316,675 of those dollars. But they're looking for us to do something to position ourselves to get that money. I think it's fair to say the state has been uh, willing to wait a little bit. You know, um, we've, there's only seven towns out of approximately 700 in this. There's only seven sites um, that are being granted this money out of 700 similar kinds of projects around the state. So we're, we're kind of lucky to be able to get the money. But in order to get the money, we need to uh, we need to make some some good faith efforts moving forward. And um, a couple of the options are to that the residents of Jersey Heights form an HOA. That is highly unlikely. Um, I certainly haven't heard anything along those lines that would make that likely. Um, and to reiterate, the town cannot force an HOA. We have, we have no authority to do that. A second option is a fire district. That too is very unlikely. It would uh, also require 100% uh, participation. A third option is a special assessment district. A uh, fourth option is the town simply takes on the project themselves. And a fifth option is that we just um, pretend like nobody's asking us to do anything and just continue um, continue as if it um, as if it wasn't an issue. 
I, for one, don't think that last option makes a lot of sense. It certainly positions us in a place where we could have substantial uh, penalties and little litigation down the road. I don't really know. It's hard, it's hard to know what that fifth option would be. What was presented to the residents that were at the meeting the other night was this special assessment district, which would, um, don't have the final numbers on what that would cost, but what that would mean is they would pay an additional fee to uh, allow this project to go forward. I think, I think it's safe to say too that <clears throat> to qualify for the grant, it needs to be a public-private entity. Thank you. So if the town were to take this on solely on their own, we would forfeit that grant money. The point of having a conversation about an HOA or a fire district or a special assessment uh, district keys into our ability to enter into a public-private relationship, which qualifies us for the 3P grant. So at this point, that special assessment district is the, what seems to make the most sense because it allows us to get over $300,000 from the state and allows us to move forward with this project that um, we're, we, we may be told we need to do. Uh, we just don't know. So we're not looking to take any action tonight. It's really just an FYI, continuing the conversation. Um, give the board an opportunity to, the four of us were at the meeting last Thursday and Laura, you were at the previous meeting, so you're familiar with this. Mm -hmm. Is there any additional information anybody wants to present before I open this up for public conversation and public uh, um, input? I think the only other thing is, is that we're really looking at um, an approximate split between the um, special assessment district at a roughly 60 70 percent in the municipality as the public piece is in the 30 30 to 40 percent uh, range in terms of the share of the burden so the town will be assuming some responsibility in not to reiterate too many things here but the three acre stormwater rule is based on impermeable surface, which includes roofs, driveways, sidewalks, and roads. And the state has delineated the percentages based on what that impermeable surface is between the roads and sidewalks and the rooftops and uh, driveways. And that's where the 70-30 split approximately uh, comes from. One other thing I would say is this special assessment district would need to be voted in by the voters of Morristown, the entire town. And one of the one of the things that came out of the meeting last Thursday were three, again, in my opinion, I don't know how the rest of the board feels. We haven't had a conversation about it, but one of the things um, was if a special tax assessment district is put in place for Jersey Heights, would it only cover this stormwater project? I, for one, think it should only cover this stormwater project. Another question was, well, are we going to add additional taxes to this in the future? And I'll just say, I, for one, do not think that should be allowed. I think this should be a a, a one a one time a one time event and the third thing is that this district this special assessment district would sunset itself at the end of um, whatever period of time we would finance this loan and i'll just go on record as saying i think that's a very good idea too um, i think that's the least we can do for these folks for the in the position that they're in so um, clearly, the board's in a tough spot. Um, we've got <clears throat> we've got this rather expensive project that's probably going to need to be done, and the state's offering us approximately seventy-two percent of the money right now. 
it's hard for us to thumb our nose at the state and pass up the $316,000 and then later have to put the entire bill. So the special tax assessment district, special assessment district does allow us a way to get the grant money and move forward. And by the way, as Chris said, you know, approximately 30% of what we would need to uh, come up with would come up from, uh, from town funds, which would be 30% of the hundred and some odd thousand dollars that's left over. So, any questions from the board? No, my comments, I, I'd like to speak to it though. Um, I, I think the four of us certainly last time and the Duaro probably the first time heard concerns about from Jersey Heights about the width, width and breadth of this special assessment tax district. And you enunciated very well the three major concerns that I think all the four of us heard. And I also support that. I think the special tax assessment district is the way to go. Because what Chris said gets us into the public private conversation uh, and gets us those monies that we can't afford not to get. And I think to the best of my understanding, it <coughs> mitigates the impact and the, the unknown of what, what's going to happen with this tax assessment. It's, it's fixed. It's, there's a cost, there's a time frame, and there's a scope. And it doesn't, any wording around that should not allow an open door anywhere in there where it seems we can make a decision to move something more into that. That would need to be it. If that needs to be done, that was a separate conversation entirely of this special tax. Um, I'm certainly open to further comments, but right now that would be my leaning as to where we should be going as a community to try and address the Jersey Heights situation. Bearing in mind that really the the two groups we have to try and serve the general the general voter population and the, and the special Jersey Heights section who certainly need something I don't think they should bear the entire cost of it and we are not I think this is a way to spread that out in a way that is hopefully palatable to the to the Jersey Heights community. Thank you, George. I think the only other thing that I would add to that is the fact that after our meeting on Thursday night, um, you know, there was a discussion about long term maintenance and, um, you know, uh, hearing uh, concerns of the residents uh, contemplating this sense. Um, I certainly think that once the improvements are made to the storm water system, that the long term maintenance um, shouldn't be really any different than any other street in the village of, of Morristown. So um, I am inclined to um, agree with the fact that the term of the note would retire both um, the uh, Jersey Heights responsibility, um, there would be nothing else set to that in the long term maintenance beyond the expiration of the note, which right now for conversation's sake is around 15 years um, that I would be supportive of the town assuming any long term, just like any other street. And because um, uh, thank you for bringing up the long term because that was I know a conversation um, and if I remember correctly, the thought was that the only kind of long term was a periodic pumping uh, of the of the main um, gathering spot. Was that correct, or was any other long term maintenance determined? I, it's hard to know what all the long term maintenance might be. It's hard to know what might come along in fifteen years, but. I'm thinking more that like day-to-day, -day, like predictable, like that, pumping and... That would certainly seem to be the, the number one, yeah, the prime issue. Yeah. So we have a proposed solution. The final application was not submitted because at the time the state required an HOA. So it's been pending because there is no HOA. Mm -hmm. The state has adjusted their position and as of May 14th they stated either they need to be an HOA or the town accepts responsibility 
So uh, we've been communicating with the state and uh, they want to help make this work. Um, having said that, the potential solution still needs to be formally submitted with engineering studies. Um, and A&R could turn around and say, this isn't sufficient. So we might have to come up with a new plan. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but that's a possibility. So to say what long-term the requirements will be on an annual basis, nobody can be sure. Too early. Um, one citizen noted in a section uh, referencing cost per phosphorus. I forget the, I forget the exact term. And it was uh, you know, like a $12,000 figure annually. Um, I, I, that, that, that resident, you know, admitted that it might be being, the, how it's stated is, is difficult to interpret. And, um, I've been in communication today with the state of Vermont A&R, but that was not one of the subjects that we had time to discuss. Um, but I, in my reading of it, I do not think it would be $12,000 per year. There would be requirements for somebody to take tests and there would be requirements for occasionally cleaning out the system, but I, I don't think it'd be that substantial of a cost. Having little understanding that I have, um, I want to qualify that. I think there's, I mean, it's safe to say that in any storm drain system, went through it in Waterbury, certainly is going to go through it here in Morristown, is there is periodic vac, uh, evacuating the storm drains because sediment and sand and you know, a lot of other debris builds up in these systems and makes them less efficient. So there will be some normal routine long-term maintenance. Maintenance, yeah. I saw one hand out in the audience. I just remind you, I, I, Tony, I know you know this, identify yeah. yourself. Uh, Tony Cody, Cody Hill. So who's gonna be responsible for this work? Is that gonna be sourced out or is it gonna be the highway department? Work being the engineering on the study? Drains, on the storm drains for Jersey Heights. Contract it out. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Tony. Yeah. Maria Ward, I live on Foss Street. Um, thank you for having these meetings. Um, this is incredibly frustrating for the residents on that end of town. Um, the fact of the matter is this, this happened, this whole permit issue happened in 2015. 2015, it's now 2024. Dan Lindley renewed this permit in 2021, three years ago. I understand it's a whole separate board. I understand it's not you, but we're getting screwed over here. So 2021, Dan Lindley signed this permit. This just got dropped in our laps, what, three weeks ago, three weeks ago with this big carrot dangling in front of our face. Money, money, money. We've got to take this money because we can't lose this money. And we all have so many questions and there are no answers. The figure that we got is from three years ago. Throw that right out the window. I know there's buffers here and buffers there. I don't care. That's a three year old. That's a three year old um, number, which cannot even be accurate. Who knows? Um, what you paid for a house three years ago is not what you're going to pay for a house today. So I don't, I don't trust that. The option of doing nothing, I know doesn't sell well with you because you want that money. You want that carrot that the state is dang, dangling in front of our face because nobody wants to lose state money. But let's also remember state money is our money. It's not free money. It's our money. So I think the takeaway for me is because there are so many questions that cannot be answered. Long-term maintenance, long-term costs, uh, original costs. Is this even necessary? There has to be a whole nother rigmarole. Someone's gotta go up there and look at it and test it and blah, blah, blah. So we don't even know. 
I feel that because this impacts over 60 residences on that end of town, we should be owed the due diligence of finding out what happens if we do nothing. Is the state going to put a lien on 60 some odd properties? I think we are owed that. Somebody please, somebody please find out what happens if we say, no, no, we're not going to do this. Because if any of you take a walk in that neighborhood, you're going to see that our storm water, it's not going into the brook. <clears throat> and this whole grant money just reminds me of when I go to the mall someday when it's raining because I'm bored and I get into whatever store I like and I see this sweater that I just, I just, I need this sweater because there's this big for sale sign. It's 50% off. So I'm buying this sweater. I just saved 50%. And then I got home and I realized I didn't need that sweater. Food for thought, please do your due diligence for us 60 some odd residences that truly believe this is baloney, strictly baloney. Three weeks ago, it was dropped in our lap. The town has known about this for years. Just imagine in 2015, if money would have been set aside every year for this, hasn't been done. Please, thank you. Thank you. Skip Ward, Foss Street, 144 Foss Street. Who has the site plan for this? Um, we do, as well as uh, Tyler Rumley, uh, Watershed Consultants. And it's, it's going on Howard's land that Howard owns? Uh, the proposed solution. Yeah, absolutely. So the proposed solution uh, as it stands would be on Mr. Manasha's land and it would require seven to eight easements on private landowners. Right. Um, can, is, can we go to Howard and can he be the private and run the same deal? No special tax thing, just say, Howard, would you be our private? You join with the town and once we get that money, the carrot money, Howard's free and clear to do whatever he wants. So give him the same deal, you know, the sunset. Once he once he says yes, I'll I'll be the I'll be the private on this. And once we get the money, you say, Howard, you're off the bill, we'll take full responsibility for cleaning it up, the maintenance, whatever's gotta to happen to it, which it's a glorified silt pond, right? Is all it is. So right now I'm say, right now I'm saying there's probably a wheelbarrow full of twigs and sticks that make it that it, it doesn't even make it to the brook anyways, but a year. And I watched the guy spread 10 tons of fertilizer on a field, not more than 200 yards from the river today. I think they should probably pull the plank out of their eye before they try to pull the sliver out of ours. You know, but I think Howard would be, somebody should talk to Howard and see if he would be the private on this. And instead of segregating us into, you, you're gonna do it 10 more times, nine more times, there's nine more projects, right? So you got to go through this nine more times, put a little special task districts everywhere. So the, those are private um, uh, entities that the state has identified. We're simply working from what the state has identified as a as this this development. I certainly hear everything that you're saying. Um, we need to enter into an agreement with Howard to even utilize his land to. Uh, for this project. So, I mean, there's ongoing conversations regarding this. So we're a residential neighborhood. The development thing doesn't fly there. We're just a, the same as Fairwood Parkway West or Elmo Street or Congress Street. And who's to say, I mean, I know they're private things now, but once the state gets their claws on this, I mean, who's to say Elmore Street or Fairwood Parkway West isn't next? They're, they're coming, they're gonna come for them. Yeah. There's three acres of impervious soil in Fairwood Parkway. Where's that water going? I mean, honestly, the, the deficit in all of this conversation is that they made it retroactive. It was the fact that once the legislature approved this and dumped it in ANR's lap, it really should have been anything that was moving forward in the development stream. But to go back retroactive to 2002 um, seems to put 
an unfair burden on everybody. Right. So that's why uh, we may be better off just to wait and see instead yeah, of. I mean, honestly, the because nobody, no, nobody knows what they're building. Yeah, you don't even know where you're building. The, um, there's preliminary designs for this thing, but at the end of the day, it's a risk reward piece here. So if we sit back and say, you know, we're not convinced that any litigation or uh, fining is going to come down Morristown's way, we forgo the three hundred sixteen thousand dollars, and then come December, they look at the town of Morristown and say. We gave you every opportunity to do this. We're going to start finding you either by the day, the week, or the month. And not only are you going to have to spend 400 and some odd thousand dollars to fix this, you're going to pay uh, fees, legal fees, in addition to that. That's a, a risk sitting at this table that I'm not in favor of. I don't think that that's a wise way to approach this. That's one person, uh, but I certainly get everything that you're saying. Thank you. At this point, Brent, there there is an engineering study that need, a feasibility study that needs to be done. An engineering study needs to be done. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, Mumley has submitted to the state um, engineering study and the concept. The state put the application in sort of a, a, a pending status because there was no HOA formed. So the state can't force the HOA. We can't force the HOA. And I wouldn't assume the select board would want them to force that. And, you know, um, I, I will say that there is an option. There is one municipality that removed their signature from a permit. But there's 64 residents here. What would the impact be to these residents if the town of Morristown removed our signature from the permit? Um, so I can totally understand the frustration. But you know, if you if you look at Do Hamill Pit, and I'm new to this town, but how much did you all pay in litigation expenses for being right? So that was the town being right over Duke Hamill Pit. How many hundreds, you know, I don't have the figure in front of me, but from what I've heard, it was very expensive. So imagine we have a permit that has been out of uh, good standing uh, for, for a number of years through, you know, basically with, you know, the decision to state's not enforcing right now let's keep pushing this um so i understand people's concerns and uh talk about this grant we're one of seven in the state so they're not offering this to all 700 that are currently designated as this um and that's that's what the select board has to consider uh, whether or not they really want to take the risk of continuing to be out of compliance uh, Paul Baker, Jersey Way. Um, the questions are just too many. I mean, what does this do to home values? Does anyone want to move into a tax district? Is our water going to be any cleaner after this is done? I mean, are, it's for Lake Champlain. Are you guys going to get the benefit that we're getting, but we're paying more? I mean, we're, it's, we're either a town or we're not. I just... What happens, and then you can't guarantee us the next board isn't going to come in here and be like, oh, we're going to keep your tax assessment district open and we're going to keep adding more taxes to it. What happens when Maple Street needs sidewalks? Is the town going to get together and be like, you need to make them a tax assessment district and you need to pay for your own sidewalks? This is a town issue. I'm not for giving up the grant. I just think. You take the number of the 500,000, divide it amongst all the taxpayers, because we're all in this together. We're not getting any benefit in Jersey Way from this, no more than anyone else. And you, that's how you pay for it. But those questions, I mean, you, you're gonna vote on something and put us out there. And when you do, of course, the res rest of the residents are gonna be like, we don't wanna pay more in taxes. So 
screw Jersey Heights, let them pay it. That's, that's a no brainer. But if you put it up there for everyone, because we are a town, and then what would it be? How many taxpayers are in this town? Take that number and divide it. I mean, what is it? So, I mean, there's just so many questions and we're just gonna up and chase this $300,000. It may not be worth it because you're gonna have 64 permanent outcasts in the town that get an extra tax bill every year. And then you're, you all are reaping the benefits from it. Same as us, but you're not paying any extra. So I just would like to see more numbers. And then it's a town issue as far as I'm concerned. I mean, it, it just doesn't, it boggles my mind that you would carve us out and segregate us from the town and be like, you have to pay extra, but we're gonna get all the benefits too. Thank you, Paul. Good job. Right on. I can go in the far corner, then Barb. Thank you. I'm Pat Harrington, I live on Cottage Street. Friday, I read in the New York Times that there's the uh, Supreme Court of the United States passed regulations uh, that the federal government cannot uh, come up, came up with a ruling that it's, uh, they can't pass on regulations and have individuals pay for it. I'm not an attorney. However, what this stemmed from is the federal government, some fishermen in New Jersey, uh, they were required to have a scientist on board for whatever reason. Uh, the federal government felt that it was necessary. Mm -hmm. So they appealed it. And it's a class action suit. It wasn't just these fishermen, but they're the ones that did it. And the Supreme Court said that an individual cannot be, uh, the federal government cannot impose regulations on an individual. I'm not an attorney. Uh, maybe somebody should look into that. I. Uh, that's we're being imposed a regulation that the, the federal government, I assume I could be wrong, the state of uh, Vermont is uh, inheriting from the federal government because it's a big federal issue. And we are individuals, which reinforces the fact that we shouldn't join an HOA because we're no longer individuals. So it's my opinion, like I said, that it really is the town's baby. Uh, that's, that's the only, only thing. Uh, I think that, uh, the, the town attorney should take a look at this federal, this, uh, Supreme court decision. It's ironic. I read the New York times Friday and, and this decision or Saturday and this decision came out Friday and we had this meeting on Thursday to me, in my mind, it hits it right on the head. So someone should look into it. I'm not an attorney, uh, food for thought. May, it may make your decision easy. Yeah. You may not have a choice. You may not be able to impose this regulation on the residents of Jersey Way. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Barbara Percy, um, Jersey Court. Um, I have three quick things to say. First of all, you mentioned, Don, that um, that it's not you're not we're not required to have an HOA you can the town can insist that from us at, or a fire assessment but am I right too that a special tax district is not required by the town for us it is not required okay and then at one point I thought from the last meeting that there was something said that couldn't a public private partnership be arranged just by the easements counting those seven or eight easements within our area, those people are agreeing to be a private help to this whole thing happening. And couldn't that qualify as public-private partnership? Then the other thing I have, and then I'll sit down is, um, have you done, and th maybe this is common knowledge and I just don't know, have you done special tax, tax districts before in this town? Or would we be setting a precedent for that? I think that latter one, isn't one of the shopping centers? One in Katie's Falls for the water district, for a water district, water, maybe just water, I don't think it's water and sewer, that you could have opted in to it. And that's part of that. That's one of the, the one that I know of in town. Yeah. 
Thank you, Barb. Um, go ahead. Rich Jacobs, uh, 227 Jersey Way. Uh, beginning of the last meeting, I was talking about how it was important for us to, to at least consider all the alternatives and that I appreciate all that you're doing and that, that still holds true as far as um, appreciate uh, all that you're doing to have this conversation. The end of the last meeting, I think we were all kind of hit with uh, from Jim Pease as far as a couple of situations in South Burlington, I believe, and elsewhere where towns have taken on the whole stormwater issue as a town-wide situation. And I'm thinking that that may be something to investigate in this case to go along with some of the suggestions that have been made about the town taking on the responsibility that if these numbers were divided among all the townspeople that the cost would potentially be a lot less and as little as you're talking about for our costs it would be that much less if it was the entire community and i just think those are a couple of very interesting precedents as far as south burlington and elsewhere where um, they have taken on stormwater as an entity in a project that that needs to be handled so yeah, thank you, you called that a stormwater utility, utility district, district. Yeah. municipalities have established stormwater utilities that would be a that would be a special assessment district because there would be fees paid by all property owners based on a prorated portion of their impact on the stormwater that's what i heard him say that when you form a utility district all entities pay in to support not only immediate need changes but also long-term maintenance so it's not like you take it's a one and done if you take one specific project and disperse that across all entities you take a look at all the storm drain issues in Morristown or Morrisville set up a district and then there would be a separate fee for each entity to support that system it's a fee-based system but for the entire community that's that's what I understood right yeah I mean but it would be I mean, everybody that was feeding into that storm drain would be paying some sort of a fee for that. So you're just taking the, the issue and expanding it across a larger section. So, so I guess I have a question here because I live on a dirt road. Um, so I, I think, you know, part of this is <clears throat> the bigger thing is impervious. Um, you know roads and things so i'd be curious if south burlington what's their percentage of paved roads to unpaved roads because i believe that morrisville's morris towns has a much higher percentage of of dirt roads to paved roads so just curious as to i i, I appreciate everybody that we are a town but life in the village is very very different than life outside. Um, um, so, you know, but again, it gets into the pervious, non pervious, you know, and, uh, you know, I know for a fact that I'm running my own sewer, my own water, you know. Um, so there's so many things to consider. I agree. There's so many questions. Uh, it's not an easy answer anywhere. But I, I, I guess it would be as we're asking questions. Thank you. Well, uh, my name is Tom Coulier. I live in Morris. Uh, I, I, I was away for and missed the meeting, so I'm coming into this cold, just listening to this. But these folks are Morristown residents. Uh, they're, they're not Jersey residents. They're Morristown residents. They're your responsibility. Uh, we can't let the state come in and, and hit those people and not thinking they're going to come in and hit me up on on, on uh, Silver Ridge Road. It's because we're going to get $40,000, $400,000. Many times I've battled you guys about the budget, and many times I've been told, 
well, it's only $500,000. I think this is a town problem and the town has to pay for it. And if we tell the state we're not going to do it, well, then, okay, we'll, we'll live with that. Or if we're going to do it, we do it with the town money, not Jersey Way money. We are all residents. We all pay taxes. This is a town problem. What EPA is a town problem. And, and for me to say add taxes is going some. But they are residents. We'll see how you vote. We'll see how you vote in March. Yeah, I say that is. But it is. It's it's our problem and we gotta face it. And and we can't expect those folks to pay for it. And so that that's all it's okay. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Yeah. Uh Holly Baker, Jersey Way. Um to slippery slope when we start creating divide in a community. Um, it's been a great deal of time participating in cultural diversity trainings, which I just love. Um, and I mean that with absolute kindness, they just get monotonous. But it's just really concerning with the state where we try to create so much community and sense of love. And we want people to come here that we're looking at a situation where our town wants to excise a part of a district just because of a stormwater issue. Um, yes, it's a different world living on a dirt road versus a paved street. But, um, you know, to take it one step further, I don't have kids, but I still pay school tax. I couldn't have children, that wasn't my choice, but I still pay school tax. There's no concessions for that. We're a community. Um, when I vote in March, there's a budget. We have numbers. I know where my money's being spent. I may vote yes, I might vote no, depending on what I agree with, but I have the facts I need. I don't understand how this can be considered until additional facts are collected. Um, we have hypothetical numbers, which are great. Um, with my finance background, I did my own amortized schedule for the entire town lowballing 500 property communities for 15 uh, years on the numbers that were proposed and we're looking at maybe a dollar fifty a month and I know I love all day because we have way more than 500 property owners in this town so we're looking at pennies maybe um, so I just think this is really something that we're rushing to get money that really at the end of the day isn't going to mean anything because this is going to be a long-term problem so the long-term problem is not gonna be solved by the short-term solution of a, a grant. It's great that we're being presented with this opportunity. Um, I just think we need to think really hard about creating a divide because once you do that, there's no turning back and it gets worse. Thanks. Thanks, Holly. Anybody else, Kate? Kate Greenman, Jersey Way. I have two questions. One is, you, I understand that an HOA can't be imposed. Can easements be imposed? What if some of the residents choose not to have anything dug in their backyard and they refuse to give an easement? What happens then? I don't know if eminent domain would play a factor in that or not. Would that hold up the whole project to the point that then it would pass the point of being eligible for the grant? I would, I, I would think the state would look at us and say they're trying to move things forward. This is a bump in the road, but so far they've been willing to forego some bumps. And that would, I would hope they would see that as a bump. That is one of the questions that we brought up last Thursday was what if we can't get those easements and how do we proceed? Is that something I mean, I know I'm, I probably have said this before, but a, a question that could be, it's like like five or six homeowners, could they be asked before we go any further to like know if they're gonna be a yes or a no? Go ahead. So uh, tomorrow I'll be in the process of pulling up deeds, just in general. Um, I've also been in touch with uh, Tyler. I want to see if 
you can give me at least three or four proposed properties that would need to have uh, easements, and I'll, I'll become very specific to those. And if I can't interpret the deeds, um, I, we do have counsel assisting us. I, I try to be my billable hours. Um, but those are things that I'm in discussion with A and R about because you know, on the one hand, they want the town to take responsibility as one of the proposed options. But what if the town cannot obtain easements? So they understand that concern. Um, and so I'm just trying to. Okay, and then my last question is, I know a preliminary um, you know, plan has been made, but is that plan based on that this has to be done? Because my question is, when walking around and seeing where the, when the rain falls, where it goes, it seems to go in a lot of different directions. And I'm wondering if a, an, an assessment has been done or an analysis has been done, does this really re require this project to be done to affect the benefit to Lake Champlain? That's an excellent question, Kate. And you asked me that question yeah. basically in an email as well. And I would say, you know, we do have an engineering study that is in the hands of the state right now. Is that correct? Or are we still modifying that? Yeah, so this, the solution, the state has certain requirements. It doesn't have to treat the whole, what they consider subdevelopment. It only has to treat, right, 50%. So this solution should work. We just, we don't know. It still requires additional uh, information and engineering studies to be submitted to the state. Um, you know, there, there could be other alternative options. Uh, you know, communication I had with Mr. Mumley, he said there might be alternatives that are less expensive. There might be alternatives that are more expensive, but the solution that was developed back in 2021 is what we have to, to model after. It's what's been submitted in uh, initial form to the state. And, um, but the state categorically has, I've asked multiple ways how they determined this development and it's off of the original permit, taking that original permit and then through various mapping techniques saying this is required and then the, the 50 percent is basically what this solution would address to, to qualify as a solution so my question is so they found a solution to a problem they're assuming there is but has anybody done an assessment to find out if there really is a problem they <laughs> <laughs> know uh, <laughs> There have been uh, water sample studies, but as far as I know, those studies were only for whether this proposed solution would work with the water levels. I can follow up with the state, you know, and ask them, has anybody really done water sampling? Um, but I've also had to like look forward for possible solutions for the community to the best of my ability. And so things that I would normally be asking and doing that are in the past when I've been told categorically that we need to fix this, um, I've not had as much time um, to, to research. I can, I just want to add, I work up at Lake Elmore and spent an hour and a half today driving a water sample down. We take, the state takes water samples every single week from every water body, body that we have. So I, there should be data because <laughs> um, I can tell you that, you know, uh, it's every single Monday. I paddle out to the middle of the lake, get a sample, paddle it back, get in a truck, drive to Waterbury with 10 other samples. So there is there's data, there should be data. And, you know, we, uh, Lake Elmore actually was shut down at one point this year because of, um, you know, basically runoff from different places. Um, so uh, I 
can't guarantee the state, but uh, there's there's tests out there. So there should be some data somewhere for us. Sure, go ahead. Uh, actually, I'm going to let Chris go first. He hasn't spoken. Uh, yeah, I just had a couple questions. Uh, well, first one, uh, what happened? I mean, most likely you're going to try to do the tax, tax assessment thing. What happens if it doesn't pass? Is there like an alternate plan? I think somebody asked that last time, I think. Oh, uh, Chris Myers, 108 Jersey Way. Sorry. <laughs> Um, is there an alternate thing that could happen or uh, what would happen? Again, I would like to think that the state would see that as us trying to yeah, that's get this last. good effort solution, mm -hmm. but that's clearly a Who hypothetical knows? that none of us can answer. But um, I, I mean, it's there's uh, been so many questions like that presented tonight. Yes. And last Thursday and at the previous a lot meeting. of a lot of unknowns. Right. Um, uh, and what would the time frame be? You, you'd uh, kind of figure this out in order to get the money fairly quickly. Uh, when would you be able to have information of like a study uh, that would probably be like one of the initial steps? Uh, is that kind of in the works or how was how, how that kind of fit along with uh, the, the grant money and all that sort of thing? That's a good question. Do you want to try and tackle that, Brent? So I was on a team's meeting with three people from a and today. Uh, they're, you know, in writing, they stated on May 14th that one of the two milestones had to be met by June 30th, either an HOA is formed or the town is set full responsibility. I immediately reached out to them on May 30th, uh, you know, saying, explaining uh, the situation and saying, we need more flexibility. I want to let you know that I will be calling the Secretary of the Agency of Natural Resources to try to come to some sort of uh, agreement on extending that timeline. Uh, subsequently, they told us that that June 30th timeline was no longer a hard timeline. Sweet. Because uh, <laughs> that's gone by. <laughs> uh, and we're waiting for a confirmation from their A&R business office about when that timeline will be. Um, and while we're waiting for that, I'm trying to place pieces together so that if we know the timeline and if it's feasible, we can try to move forward so if the select board chooses to do so. Yep. Uh, so that probably would be like one of the next steps would be to uh, get uh, some sort of study going. And Senator Westman has uh, expressed interest in assisting the town with obtaining some more information. I'm, I'm, I wasn't able to reach him uh, on Friday, uh, but I know that he's very interested in trying to assist the town. Uh, and I had a phone call with, with ANR today and they indicated that they were coming to more of a solid decision um, and it looks like it'll be more time than what was even originally discussed. Uh, do, do, you, do you guys decide uh, like who and where and when to do the assessment, that sort of thing? It would be a town-wide vote, so it would have to be warned. Uh, would, it, would it be at the same time as the um, tax assessment district or? or so, so it would be a, a separate vote on just the tax assessment district. Yes. It could be, depending on the timing with you know, what the state allows us to do, it could be in August at the primary, it could be in November for the general election. It could be in March next year. We just don't know what the hard deadline is. Well, you're, you're talking about the tax assessment right. district. Uh, what, what about the, uh, the, the, um, the testing, the, not the testing of the water, but uh, the, uh, how, it's all, how much it's going to be, what's going to be involved, all that kind of stuff that we don't really know right now. We have an estimate, which, you know, things haven't really changed there that much. 
So, you know, maybe that's still good. I don't know about the numbers, but, uh, you know, the, as far as like where the water's going, it's been going the same way, you know, for a long time. Um, but yeah, I don't know if they really have, you know, a, a solid idea where the water is going. As Kate says, the water is kind of going everywhere. Hers and my property, it don't doesn't go anywhere near it. But you know, only fifty percent. But I, uh, looking at the map of the storm storm drains the way they are right now, it looks like it only covers about fifty percent of the of the households. Um, yeah, there's, well, I, I don't want to get into the weeds on that. And, and I don't really know, cause I'm not an expert. Um, but, uh, when would something like that happen? Uh, you know, we, you do get an expert that says, oh, here's where all the water is going. I don't think we have a timeline on this at this point. Well, We're I, waiting I think on those moments. initial studies have been done, yeah. um, by watershed right. consultant. So that's what the initial solution was developed based upon it. so and things haven't changed as much as i have said right so the initial studies have been done it's it's the final it's the final submissions that need to be completed we submitted and at the time i believe they thought by submitting that solution that it would it would proceed to move forward. What caused it to to basically be put in a pending no HOA all that correct, kind of no stuff. HOA and so the state has adjusted their their opinion on that. So it's it's just a matter of a couple more studies uh, that Tyler Munley has indicated that he could perform, um, but it still has to be submitted to ANR and it's still contingent upon ANR's decision. So the first thing is would be the tax assessment district and then studies probably. Well, I think there are parallel roads here. Yeah, it's, it's hopefully we can get as much information as possible before the tax assessment district. But oh, we're going to, you know. Uh, oh, you said that uh, it's the um, it's kind of up in the air as to when that would happen. It wouldn't happen at the at the primary. Um, it could happen in August. As Chris said, at the primary, it could happen in November at the general election. It could happen next March. Um, it's really dependent upon, you know, how much leeway the state gives us, how long they're willing to wait. All right. And I, I, I just want to say I appreciate that you're, uh, uh, you're leaning towards, you know, making this a one-off sort of thing. I appreciate that very much. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chris. Okay. I just had one question too, uh, just for a clarification. Um, there were a couple of things. Someone mentioned the state money, but this original one billion came from the federal government. Um, so yes, it is state money, but it's also, I mean, it's in the state's hands now, but it originally came from ARPA money, so federal money. So. If that's any kind of consequence it's all our money either way um the other um the other thing is is that you know the standards have changed um so any new developments that are going in are gonna have these extra costs um and just talking about you know home values you know a new home is going to be up to the standards you know and it's with all of us that have homes you know older homes things change and you know we're constantly trying to get them up to code and different things um so you know not that that's any kind of consequence but new developments are going to have cost also related to these state um these state rules i mean you know you guys and all, most of us were built at the standards of the time so there my understanding is there is some infrastructure there uh, and there are some easements in place uh, based on Mumley's uh, study. So it's we're not starting from scratch. Um, but, you know, the state has come up with this lovely plan. I'm going to. Um, I can't see it from here. Oh, oh Kristen. Sorry, I missed you there. Well, that's okay. I only just raised my hand. Um, there's so many layers to this that I'm not even sure I can ask this question in a coherent fashion, but I will attempt to do so. Um, 
obviously a person could take um, one of the downtown neighborhoods uh, in Morrisville and draw a line, a circle, a square, whatever, that was the same size as our neighborhood. Sorry, I should have said, I'm Kristen Fogdahl. I live on Jersey Way. Um, but those, that neighborhood, those, and they're generating similar storm runoff. Um, but as I understand it, the origin of this, what makes us different versus the same size collection of houses in the village is that there was a collective permit put in place. Am I right about that? By the developer. And then that was taken over by the town. Um, so my, my question is, if, if that's the only thing that's causing us to be viewed collectively in the eyes of the state, and the town at one time had it, had the permit, is there a way that we can argue as a town that it's no different than how the town is dealing with stormwater runoff in these other areas? Which then leads me to ask the question, how does the town or how is stormwater being dealt with in those parts of town where, again, it's just a collection of 30 homes, 40 homes, 60 homes, whatever, they're still giving off stormwater pollution um, via the driveways and the roofs, just like ours are. How is that being treated? And is there an argument that can be made back to the state that it's just gonna be the same as other parts of town? Um, probably not, but I know you guys have been having more recent conversations than any of us have had as residents. So um, is there any chance that any of that made sense and that you can answer it or that Brent could or whatever? Yeah, Kristen, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I'll take the two extremes and then the middle will be kind of murky, but as Laura alluded to, for those of those that are well outside of the village, it's stormwater is not being treated at all. For those individuals that are in the village itself that are getting water and sewer, that would be a really good question for the trustees and to see what degree of stormwater is being treated by them. I, I, I do not know how much of the stormwater that they're collected is being treated before it goes into the Lamoille River. But then, uh, and we end, enter that murky zone, which is where Jersey Heights is. And um, so that's, and that, and that that's my best attempt at answering that question. Am, am I right that the murkiness in, in the state's mind, possibly the town's mind too, originates because of that wastewater permit that first the developer had and then the town had? Well, I think the murkiness exists with these three, you know, this this three acre impervious surface issue in developments all across the state and that the state in its wisdom decided to, as we, I think it's safe to say, change the rules. And, um, and, and now we've got these 700 and some odd developments around the state that are falling under that. Um, the three acre number that they chose clearly it was probably a pretty political thing at the time when they decided to make those rules and pass that legislation and create those statutes. But unfortunately, you know, Jersey Heights falls falls into that category. I also want to be very careful that we don't mix terms here. Wastewater is a very, very different um, subject, heavily, heavily permitted and very different from stormwater. Yeah, I'm not talking about wastewater. I'm right. talking about stormwater that's collected in town. Right, but, but in many, many areas, stormwater and wastewater end up together. I don't know what's happening in Morristown. I can, I can say historically, Morristown has tried to separate stormwater from wastewater. Uh, many years ago, they had the schools separate storm, school districts separate stormwater from wastewater because they didn't want to invest. Invest is the wrong word. But uh, 
tie in wastewater through the stormwater through the wastewater treatment plant that was unnecessary. It, I, Wally Reed said to me Thursday night, "It's not all done. It's yeah. there's progress being made. I don't know what Wally would have a better idea what the percentage is, but stormwater and wastewater are very different things, and the village tries to treat them differently. Is there a hundred percent answer to that question? No." Well, and the state does. There's huge permitting. You talk to businesses that have wastewater permits. You know, they're a huge process. So I just, I just don't want to get things con too confused. That this is specifically about stormwater. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to draw this to a close. I'm just going to say thank you once again for everyone who's come out here and for all your comments. They've been. I think the board has heard you. Um, I will say every time I listen to you, I change my mind on different things. So uh, for what that's worth, um, I, I, you, you make very convincing arguments, I, I, I will say. It, it, it's hard to, hard to just uh, ignore what you're saying. I will also say that it's very possible that we may have another, we're not taking action tonight as a board, um, but it's very possible that we're going to have another meeting sooner than later when we get some of this when we get some of this information that we're looking for so that we can we can make a decision um, i've certainly added to my list of things that might need to be considered if we do go to the voters with a vote so um, I, I i think you've offered some some great great suggestions some great ideas here tonight so if it's uh okay with the board i guess i would move on but hey, the board okay with that okay thank you once again yeah thanks for coming out old business we have no old business uh approve the warrants i guess i would be looking for a motion to approve the warrants so moved second so vote Motion by Chris and a second by George. Any questions, any discussion? I, just, I haven't seen them, so they're here. All those in favor of approving the warrants? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Abstaining, I haven't seen them. 7401. Okay. Community comments. I would ask you to come up to the microphone and identify yourself. Uh, Pat Persico. And are you voting on the zoning changes tonight? Or? We are not. It's not a warned agenda item tonight. I will say we had, I'll just say this quickly. I kind of anticipated this might come up tonight, but we, we are planning to have another public hearing. We're just, it's not happening tonight. So how do I find out about that? Is that been pushed down further down or? Yeah, so. so a month or? I don't know if it's gonna be a month or if it's gonna be next week or two weeks from now, but it's a decision that's gonna to need to be made about when that's gonna happen. As you can see, we've had a few other topics that the board's had to deal with. But, but I will also say sincerely, I mean, there's, uh, I, I don't, I, it's not a warned item, so I'm not going to get into the weeds on this, but I will just say that we had one public hearing. We, there was a lot of concern expressed about these bylaws, the proposed bylaw changes, one in particular, and I think the board um, needs to take its time and just make sure we get this right, that we do this right. Can I ask then how this process went? So it, it, basically the planning commission started in, uh, uh, 11, 28, 23, and then it got down to 5, 4, 5, 14, 24. And did you have these, these new regulations? Did you, had you gone over them? Did you know they were coming down the pike? We did, yes. Did we know all the details of them? No. Did we have the public input? Absolutely not. I think that's it for now. I'm a little bit confused about how this whole process went yeah and so i've gone to different meetings and it just seems so yeah i'll leave it at that
Yeah. You got it. I'm going to follow up on that. It was in the paper that the voting was going to be tonight. It was in the newspaper. One. And, and this is something that, that the I've been going to all the meetings. They've told everybody uh, the process. They gave the dates to everybody. So it was scheduled for tonight. And how can you just decide not to do that? I don't know where that was worn. It was not anything that came through administration okay. or to the board. Well, it was mentioned every time at every meeting that we had uh, with the public meeting or, or any meeting that we, we were at with the planning council meeting that the, this week would be your vote, next week would be the trustee vote. I would I say mean, that the schedule is flexible. It's flexible, it's tentative, it and there's been this Absolutely no I, promise that we were going to vote tonight. This is what so. I've been going on in the meetings I've been going to. Okay. Today. That was a tentative schedule, I think, that Todd Thomas put together. Yeah. And that does select, he doesn't schedule select board meetings. So. Okay. Thank you, though. I certainly, yeah. certainly hear you loud and, and clear. And I'll make the, uh, also suggestion that you have the uh, agenda uh, printed out for us, packet for the people and not put the burden on the residents to go and, and, and copy their own 65 pages, whatever it is. Tonight, you said there was a very important management document that was out, nobody's seen it, except the people that have gone into the town. But it is on the website, correct? The town website, you keep saying the town website, people don't go in there. I no. asked somebody how many people signed up for that the last time was 50 summer. Right? I have to look again. Right, the, it's available it's to anybody that wants to. Again, look. you're putting the, the burden on the residents to go and get it and to copy it then. The burden could be on you to buy it for us. Well, you can read it online. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you, Tom. Tony? Yeah, Tony Cody. I'm changing my name to repeat. Okay. Repeat, repeat. Repeat and repeat. So I got six of you right in front of me right now. And I got a hundred dollar bill for every one of you to go up on Cody Hill in the next 24 hours and go 30 miles an hour like the speed limit is. And then report back to me to see how your car is doing. Okay? You don't want to do that, Chris? No, I, I'm okay. simply listening to you. All right. Now, I've told you guys before, I have $100,000 worth of classic cars. If one of them gets hit because we have to dodge potholes, and I mean potholes like this, there will be a lawsuit. Okay? Somebody could get hurt, too. What we have for traffic up there is all kinds of outsiders. We have people from Florida, Connecticut, New Jersey. I don't know if they stay up here at that muddy moose or where they go, but they're all going 40, 45 miles an hour over the potholes. It's not a good scene. So you can call me a repeat if you want. Nothing's getting done. No ditching, no work on the roads, no grading. The road's all washed out. And before I got here, 15 minutes before I got here, um, I had a person come up to my garage and said, I carried mail here for 25 years. The road is the worst that it's ever been in 25 years. Said, when Bill Moulton was here, there was no problem, ever any problem. And I'll concur with that. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. So my name is Sheila Tarablouts and talk about stop storm water runoff. Both sides of our roads have made their own ditches like this all the way down in the dirt road. And there's one huge hole when the pavement meets the dirt on right side. 
And Tony's right, it's very, very ruddy up there. And it doesn't help with all the other cars that are being circled around there. So I think personally, somebody ought to find a grader operator that knows what they're doing and try to grade the roads. You know, if you don't have any, why are you paying all the highway department people to grade when they don't? Grass is this tall on the side of the roads. So I know going out of Ed Cody's farmhouse, you can't even see a car coming. You cannot see a car coming. That's an accident waiting to happen. Do you know how many people I have met going around my side of the road trying to miss all those holes? I've been into many, many close accidents along with everybody else that lives up there because people are on the wrong side of the road. And last night we saw five trucks leaving Ed Cody's house that I swear to God, we're going well over 50 on that straightaway. That's not okay. So something really has to be done. They, and they the cops been. are welcome to come up there anytime they want to and sit in anybody's driveway. And I know they have a speed thing up there now, but what does that do? It doesn't slow anybody down. Did the first two days, because I've been helping Ed put a big barn sale together. So we watched it all, carrying stuff from one building to the other, how fast the cars are going. You know, we just asked for help up there. And I know there's a lot of roads out there that need it. We're not the only ones. We listen to it all the time. And I don't know why we're the only ones complaining. You know, everybody on Cody Hill, bitches. Why are we the only ones that show up? Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. Grant, do you have, you have some notes on this? Yeah. You took some notes? Okay. Come on up. Skip Ward, 144 Foss Street. Um, can we comment on the Oxbow? You can comment on anything. No, I'm not a hydrologist, hydrologist or an engineer, but um, over the years, how many times in the last two years or four times they've been, Percy's been down there dumping fill into holes? The lower part of the oxbow, I think any money spent on that is, you, you might as well take the gravel to Johnson. They're going to end up with it. That's where it's going, or it's going to go where the dam is, the dam's full. But. Any money going into the oxbow is a waste of money. The lower part of the oxbow. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Usually I don't comment, but I'll just say if you've been listening to meetings, you know you would know I agree. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. Thank you very much, folks. Schedule. Let me do this. I can do it. Uh, next select board meeting is July 15th at 5.30. On Tuesday, July 16th, we'll have a charter committee meeting at 5.30. And then Monday, August 5th, I believe it should say, not first. Monday, August 5th should be the next, should be the first select board meeting. Am I correct? Yeah, you're right. That's okay. Yeah. You just wanted to stay in July, didn't you, Judy? I did. <laughs> I did. I, I had the first Monday of August. It was August first. First Monday. <laughs> there you <laughs> go. <laughs> Works for me. Other business. Um, I would move to go into executive session because I find a premature general public knowledge of probable civil litigation to which the public body may be party would clearly place the public body involved. At a substantial disadvantage. Second that. I have a motion by Chris, second by Richard. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. 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 I would further move would to go into I would further move to go into executive session to discuss a probable litigation under the provisions of Title I, Section 313A1 of the Vermont Statutes to include town manager Brent Raymond and Executive Assistant Judy Elberry. 
Second. Motion by Chris, second by Richard. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. Aye. Aye, that would be uh, unanimous. We are now in executive Thank session. Thank you, folks.